and I'm pretty sure there's mosquitoes and God knows what else. I'll show you what we're talking about. Hopefully there's not a snake. I really do hate snakes. <laughs> My name is Nick Schiffer. I'm a home builder from Boston, Massachusetts. And when we're not building new homes, we're typically renovating old homes and adding new life to them, similar to the house behind us. We are in High Falls, New York, about a two hour ride from New York City. And we're standing in front of a former museum and chapel that was built in the 1800s. This house needs a ton of work. And rather than knocking it down and building a new house, we're gonna go through this and talk about the things that we can do to create a really unique home. First thoughts, this building has obviously been through multiple iterations of renovations. There's a lot of hints on the exterior. And one of the things I do notice right off the bat is we're dealing with thinner cedar shingles, which lends me to believe that it is a more modern install. A lot of the older materials were thicker, but I also noticed at this back corner here is that we actually have some signs of tar paper. So the tar paper is a product that was used a lot later than this building was originally built. So the siding has likely been replaced, but there's a lot of signs of moisture and even rot. And one of the reasons being is that the ground is so close to the bottom of these shingles. And as we work our way back, you know, some of this damage is getting worse. This is, you know, some of the worst uh, damage that really needs to be repaired. And what we're looking at is the sill of this home. So this sill typically sits on top of the foundation and you can see it's been rotted out. It looks like someone's already come in here and kind of pulled this thing apart to probably understand what needs to be done. But this, is, this can be expected with this age of home. And you can see the building continues to be buried. So as this wood is buried, you know, moisture and water and dirt are just gonna be backed up against it and rotting out this wood over time. So that's something that I think is one of the main focuses of getting a really sound structure here is first dealing with the grade, but then going around and dealing with some of the repair work Looking at the entry of this home is where I think we can make the biggest improvement on this elevation. So we have this beautiful double door here behind me, but what we don't have is protection from when we walk up those stairs and you're fumbling with your keys. And also above it, I find that the tripled up window and then what appears to be a chimney is super awkward. And honestly think that if we were to remove that roof section, build a portico over the doors, so now you have protection, you utilize the roof of that portico and actually do a slight, almost a Juliet balcony up there, and then turn those three windows into full height doors. That's gonna give you a little outside space on the second floor, also the opportunity to get some fresh air in that second floor and give you the protection and, and additional curb appeal. I think that I would like to replace that bell tower uh, and restore it back to what it once was. So why don't we head inside and see what we're dealing with in the existing space. Envisioning what this primary suite could be starts with understanding and appreciating what is here already. And what is here is already is this beautiful timber ceiling, these exposed trusses that are in really great shape. Flipping around the small windows, this is something that is a traditional detail, especially in older homes. It's actually something that you would see a lot more smaller windows than larger windows because of the energy efficiency. So you weren't losing a ton of heat out of them. I don't think it would make a lot of sense to have an entry directly into the primary suite here. What would be nice is replacing that original double door with maybe a big glass panel or a big glass window that was the same shape. Another thing on the front is these two Gothic windows. These were actually stained glass windows in the original chapel that I think would absolutely need to be restored. And then we have this window up top here, which, is it an octagon? One, two, three, four. And it was actually a stained glass round window, which I would also restore. What I'm trying to do on this home is from the street and as you approach it, it looks as though we've done a good job of restoring it. But as you enter the space, you start getting these really modern moments. One of the best features of this chapel is the ceiling and the trusses. And thinking about reimagining this space into a suite, I don't want to build compartmentalized rooms that essentially go all the way up to the ceiling and really ruin the space. That's the, the, the beauty in what we're standing in. It's grand, the ceilings are high, and you really want to be able to see it from end to end. So the way I imagine this space being put together is tucking a bed against this exterior wall here between two windows, and then of course you would have the three stained glass windows. But now, how do we fit in a closet in a bathroom? Well, I think what we do is we take the altar platforms and we bring them all the way to here, and we have two steps down into the bedroom. So you have a, kind of a sunken bedroom feel. 
And then we would have a hallway on this side and a hallway on this side. And then in, the, in between that is what I'm gonna call a room, and it's going to be the closet. Looking at the, the large window on the back side, you can actually see how the truss communicates with the top of the window, and on the inside here, it's a very square, rectangular window, and I would pull that unit out and have a custom unit made that tucked up and nestled tight into the bottom cord of that truss. So then you're getting that gothic peak to it. I envision a bathtub at the base of this window, a stand-up shower, a big double vanity. So what we've effectively done is we've dropped these moments to create different spaces, but have left the chapel and all of the woodwork above the beams, the wood ceiling, all left in place, respected and appreciated and allowed us to utilize the space in a way that may be a little bit more untraditional than you typically would consider. This place was used at one point as a museum, so it's really a wide open space. It's actually one of the things I really like about it because it gives you the flexibility. Also, I think it lends itself to a really open living space. Before we get into that, let's talk about the entryway. I also love the Gothic arches above that front entryway, and I think that we replicate that in this framed opening here. I also would love to use it at the far end on that wall, but I envision it much larger and basically taking up that entire back wall. But let's start with this space. With the entryway up front, we're gonna want a place where we can drop our coats, our shoes, our bags, and things like that. So I'm envisioning kind of this space as our mud room, tucked in the corner here, millwork or in storage on both sides. I really think that if we can tuck a mud room back at the end of the powder room, it makes a lot of sense. So we have a mud room, we have our powder room, you even have room for potentially a linen closet, mechanical closet, things like that. Now, before we talk about the kitchen, I kind of want to talk about the overall vibe of this space. You know, it was a commercial space, so you have this wide open room here. You have these beams carrying the second floor system. You have these steel columns holding up the beams. And I think all of that we want to play with, and I kind of envision this as Scandinavian, modern, you know, industrial vibe. Maybe we leave the floor joists expo exposed. And what does that mean? Well, you know, there's a couple issues with that. Number one, the wood flooring upstairs actually attached right to those floor joists. So think if you, upstairs you have four bedrooms, you have four children, and they happen to bring this bongo upstairs and they're upstairs banging away or vice versa, you get a party down here and you're doing the same thing, those kids are not gonna stay asleep. So you gotta think about soundproofing up there. And what we could do is we could install soundproofing on top of the floor and then our finished floor on top of that. So the kitchen I think of, let's treat it more like furniture. So you're taking pieces, say this is the island, and you're placing them in the moment and allowing that particular piece of millwork or cabinetry to be its own element. And rather than trying to rework some of these steel columns and move them around, let them be part of the structure, but allow the kitchen to be kind of built around that. With the dining room, I think that we play off the length of this building. You know, we're talking about using low cabinetry. We have this linear motion through, you know, this entire space and we have depth to the building. So you can have a really big kitchen, big island, but then accompany that with a long table at the end here. And right now the, the space is actually quite dark, but we do have this kind of bump out. And my best guess is that that was a bump out for some sort of display when this was a museum. And on the outside, they're kind of awkward looking. So I think that we would get rid of those, re-sidewall, kind of return the shape of the building to what it once was, and then instead install another big window here. The dining room is over there. We have a lot of light coming in. On the contrary, this corner over here is very dark. So I think that from, you know, essentially the end of where that mud room and powder room would be, all the way down could be our living room, sitting room, TV room, and really allowing the center of this home to remain relatively open. We have this hole in the floor. We have this stream underneath the home. This has all been ripped up and based on what I can see, I think that as you're walking through this space, you're ha you have these two linear uh, divisions of kitchen and dining and then living space over here and then the entrance to the backyard. But what if you were to have this kind of stopping point and this glass section of the floor that looked down into that stream? And especially in the spring when that water's rushing, it's gonna be a pretty cool looking feature. Now, let's go back to something that needs to be addressed. 
We are a wood structure that is sitting on top of a stream. That's water, we're, we're dealing with moisture, and that wood is gonna be absorbing moisture and then drying out, and that's what's causing a lot of this rotting issue. Not only are we dealing with the stream in the middle of the home, but the rest of the building is actually built on a crawl space. That's gross, it's wet. We have to deal with moisture as a whole and understand how we separate the wood structure. I don't really wanna go down to the crawl space because, I mean, there's a stagnant pond down there and I'm pretty sure there's mosquitoes and God knows what else, probably a snake, which I hate snakes. You know what, let's just go down to the basement. I'll show you what we're talking about. Hopefully there's not a snake. So let's just talk through what we got going on down here. So we are in a crawl space. You can see it's relatively short. And you know, we are, we have standing water here, a few inches of water actually, uh, and it's completely stagnant. But overall, you can see that there's just a lot of moisture down here. And we need to prevent this moisture from getting into the wood structure above. This is actually newer pressure treated. So it's probably replaced at some point because it rotted out due to that moisture and then that drying and that back and forth causing it to rot out. So there's a hundred different ways that you can prevent you know, or create some sort of barrier between what is standing water or just moisture in general on the floor and getting into the wood. We're not gonna dig into the technical side. The last thing you want is moisture making its way up uh, and causing mold and mildew and frankly health issues. Um, so let's get out of here. So we're back in the entryway and I wanna go upstairs, but before we do, let's talk a little bit about the stained glass windows. As far as the overall house, we're talking about a really modern interior, industrial vibes, and getting that very different vibe from the inside than the outside. And I think that that's an important feature that we really wanna showcase on this home, is that the street side and everything on the outside almost feel as though it's been restored. So stuff like the stained glass windows is something that I would absolutely leave. And even though they're not gonna perform as well as a new window, I think that for that sacrifice, it's a cool detail to have. So something we talked about on the outside was that front entryway and the portico. And these are the three windows I was talking about swapping to full height doors. We remove that front section of roof and really open this up to the ability to have three doors. You could open this up and, and gain a lot of fresh air, but also a lot of natural light. Similar to downstairs, I would envision this space kind of being linear on both sides and having this center common space, kind of taking each corner of this upstairs and putting a bedroom in it. And then when you have these three windows on either side, this here could be a bathroom that would be shared with the two bedrooms adjacent. Same thing on that side. And then you have this awesome common play space. It's just an opportunity where you can have millwork built in on the walls to put all the toys away. You can have a big bench in the middle. Um, but the one thing about the middle is you have these awesome, awesome skylights. I would take that skylight shape and transfer that shape down to the floor and then put glass panels in the floor. And I know I'm, I'm getting a little crazy and wild here, but putting a glass panel on the floor underneath that skylight now doubles down on your natural light and helps the center of that home, which is actually pretty dark right now. Let's talk about the structure of it and what we got going on. As you see these cables, these turnbuckles, I mean, this wasn't original. This is obviously done at some point because they started noticing maybe the roof was sagging or maybe there was something that they needed to combat. I mean, look at the steel struts that they have here. I would believe that they land right on those beams that are on that first floor, but that's holding the, the structure from pushing out. Same thing with these steel cables. We could leave it. I would install four steel beams and essentially this right here is considered our hip rafter. So this is going from the ridge down to the corner of the building. So I, wa I want to support the hip, but also all, all of the common rafters all the way across, including where you have these valley rafters here that are underneath your dormer. It's so basically putting a beam here and then doing that on all four sides. So how could we leave the rafters exposed? We have our rafters, then we have basically a horizontal strapping material, and then our cedar shingles that are nailed directly on top of that. That was the original roof to the building, and it's since been laid over with probably plywood. You see the, the newer asphalt roof on this building. Well, I would strip the asphalt, I would strip that extra layer of plywood, and I would strip the wood roof because it's probably not in great shape and I would install a new roof. But before I install the new roof, I would actually install exterior insulation. Before we head downstairs, I wanna talk about this bell tower. So on the outside, I mentioned that we could restore the bell tower, meaning that put the bell tower back on 
but when they removed it, they actually installed this cool skylight that drops a lot of natural light into what is the entry of that primary suite downstairs. So I would love to figure out a way to do both. Restore the bell tower, make it look like the original detail that was on the outside of this home, but incorporate some sort of skylight because I would ultimately block this off, but allow that to be a light tunnel down into the entry of that primary suite. So my final thoughts on this home, yes, it absolutely could be torn down. There's a ton of work that has to be done to not only repair, but also preserve the work that you do from the water management, from the stream, the crawl space, the standing water below, the rot, the grading around the house, all of that is work and it needs to be done just to get kind of a bare bones start on this home. All of the work that we've talked about improving it, but the point being is that while yes, it could be torn down, well, what if we reimagine the space in a way that was interesting and made the home unique? It's really an opportunity to take something that, yes, it's lived a very long life and it could end right now, but here's an opportunity to create another 100 years of interesting opportunity for the home and everyone that gets to experience it.